I went to the Charlotte Collecticon and I accidentally spent $7,000. What's up guys, we're back with another instance where I, uh, I messed up a little bit. I went to the Charlotte Collecticon this past weekend, I think, maybe it was a week ago, who knows how long it's been. I think this should be coming out very soon, there's a lot of videos from Charlotte Collecticon, so hopefully you're enjoying them. But I went to Vend, which basically means I was set up there and I had stuff for sale, I was supposed to be selling stuff to people, not buying stuff. And as you've already seen on the thumbnail, the intro, I spent $7,000. So not only did I ignore the fact that I was supposed to be selling stuff, but I also spent $7,000, which is a lot of money. So I figured I'd make a video going through everything I bought. I also bought someone's childhood collection that we're gonna go through in this video and see if it was actually worth the purchase. And I also have some stories from the weekend that were not in the vlog that I think you guys might enjoy. So before we get into it, we have a giveaway. I'll be giving away a GOAT format giveaway, first edition of Zero Priest, a Sinister Servant from the video game, and a thousand eyes restrict. All you have to do is like the video, be subscribed, turn on notifications, let me know down below what's your favorite item I bought or your favorite story that I told. And as we're going through, it might look a little tired and that's because I drove seven hours and got home at 1 a.m. yesterday after Collecticon on Sunday so I am completely pooped but we got to keep making content and I figure now's the time before I start you know reorganizing everything putting you know shipping stuff out keeping stuff whatever that I need to make this video all right so first off let's go through the booster boxes that I picked up or didn't pick up so first of all we're gonna start with this ancient sanctuary booster box this is a first dead booster box Petty Party was selling this at our booth and no I did not buy it actually someone walked up to Peter aka Petty Party and and bought this from him and then immediately handed it to me and said, hey, you wanna open this on your channel? I said, of course, man, let's do it. So I have this box, it's not mine, will be opened very, very soon. So if you're excited to see a vintage first edition booster box, this will be opened up. Hopefully we're gonna pull that enemy controller, which is a very rare PSA 10, that a lot of people still need. So that's the card we're looking for out of there. A lot of really cool stuff. So great start. I mean, I didn't even have to buy this. We get to open it up, so that's very, very cool. Hopefully we're gonna pull a secret rare, some ultra rares, it's gonna be good. Then we have a box that I actually did buy, a 36 pack magic ruler box this was unlimited so a guy walked up to me and said hey do you guys buy Yu-Gi-Oh?" and i was like depends on what it is but yeah sure i do buy a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh." and he goes i have a magic ruler 36 pack booster box and i was like that is something i would buy so we went back he went back to his booth and he brought it back and he's like yeah here you go we bought it and he's like actually do you also buy magic if you guys saw recently we did a magic redemption opening so we are back on the magic train and rich a friend of the channel from magic to millions who was on that other video He's my new magic guy. So I said, hey man, they got some magic packs. Do you want to pick them up? So I picked them up for Rich from Magic to Millions. We bought these packs right here, which Alliances is a pack I opened with Rich. We pulled the Force of Will, so that was pretty insane. We bought 10 of these Alliances packs. Very awesome looking packs. I'm not gonna lie. I think this was 1996 when we looked it up last time. So that is extremely old. That's before Yu-Gi-Oh! even started. A lot of people still think it, you know, we came out in 1996. It didn't, even though it said 1996 on some of the cards. Then we picked up six Tempest packs, which are also really old and really nice magic packs product. I've not opened this myself, so I don't know much about this, but I will say I love the old school. I mean, look at this. Is that ET right there? It might be. So those are not mine. Those are getting shipped to Rich, but uh, I did pick those up for him, and I figured I'd show you guys because that's just like really vintage and awesome looking stuff. And because it goes together with the Magic Ruler Booster Box, I did buy all this from that one guy. He said, come by the booth if you want to buy it. So I did. I came back. We had a little discussion. It was, it was a fun time. And that wasn't all the booster boxes I personally bought. I also bought a Legacy of Darkness First Edition. This is a hobby box. Oh, actually, I didn't even check. Wait. Oh, yeah, because there's 36. I don't need to check. So yeah, this is a Yada box, obviously, because if it's 36, it's Injection Fairy Lily. That's the uh, hobby retail thing, and that works for the third set through the ninth set of Yu-Gi-Oh. None of the other ones have 36 until you get to Legendary Duelist later on. I say that, and there might have been a couple weird ones, like I think Millennium Pack might have 36. There's some other weird ones, but mostly it's all 24. This is a cool box, but this wasn't the big one. The reason I got this was because I went to Troll and Toad's booth, by the way, and they had some Yu-Gi-Oh boxes laying out. This was one of them. They also had this box right here, first edition Pharaoh Servant. So this is a hobby box because it is a 24 pack. And when I saw both of these together, they're both a okay price. Like I thought it was gonna be a lot higher. And I was like, hey, what can you do for both? They gave me a discount on both of them. So I just had to pick them both up. So beautiful boxes. I actually don't own either of these right now, but who knows if we'll keep these or box break them. I don't know. It just depends on what happens. But eventually I wanna end up with all 11 of these. If I did keep these, I think I'd have like six of them or something. So we'll see what happens. These are awesome pickups either way because look at the condition of these boxes. I mean, they look absolutely awesome. I mean, I was like, heck yeah, there's a little, maybe a rip. Do I see a rip? Maybe just a rip bowl, not a rip. Very nice, really good condition. I mean, those look like they might've come out of a case recently. And speaking of booster boxes, I picked up the oldest booster box I have ever bought. 
a Magic the Gathering Fallen Empires booster box. This came out in 1994, so it started in 1993, so it was a year after Magic released, obviously way before Yu-Gi-Oh! in the US, that was 2002, so eight years at a time. This is somewhat of a meme box in the Magic community because it's just a really bad set, you know, there's not much in here, but how often are you going to see a sealed booster box from 1994? It has that vintage Magic look to it, which is pretty amazing. This will not be opened on the channel though. This I wanted to buy simply for how it looks and the fact that it's almost a 30 year old sealed box and I just love it and I need a little more magic redemption. There is a rip on the back so if you can see it's right here. So I do want to get one of those acrylic cases and just throw it in there and uh, throw this up in the background for future videos. I think it is a really awesome looking box and uh, it wasn't that expensive. You know, usually like these old boxes when they're actually good sets are tens of thousands of dollars. This is a really terrible set, so it was really cheap. Then we have even more sealed product. We have a title Dragon Ruler of Waterfalls. If you guys remember when I did the Dragon Ruler 2013 every 10 opening, go check it out. Also go check out the 2014 and 15 if you missed it because nobody watched those. I don't know if it was because it was Collecticon weekend, YCS weekend or whatever, I, mean, I don't know, but not a lot of people watch them, so go check those out. The 2013 though, this is a really hard one to find, so I had to pay a lot more for this one than I would for like a regular like Redox and Tempest. Those are not very expensive. The title and the blaster are pretty expensive. So I picked this up because it's a rare tin and uh, pretty happy with it. It's a very cool looking one as well. So awesome tin pickup. I also grabbed a monster box from Mo at my own booth. He was there and he had a monster box and he was like, yo, uh, Rux, I hear Ruxin likes these. And I was like, yes, Ruxin does like these. So picked this up for a future mystery box video. These are actually decent mystery boxes. That's why I picked it up. It's actually gonna be a fun video to open up. Maybe get some Duelist Alliance to mention a chaos, stuff like that. And speaking of stuff from my own booth, Lewis, AKA Vintage Yu-Gi-Oh! had three of these Tactical Evolution blisters, which he sold me at a pretty awesome price. Uh, a price that I'm willing to be opening these up in a future video. So keep an eye out for opening Tactical Evolutions of Labyrinth of Nightmare. We recently pulled something pretty big. I don't know if you guys have seen that from a pack from one of these blisters. So if you have not seen that yet, it might be coming out soon. So pretty exciting. And I'm probably gonna open these up, maybe get something better in the future. Well, maybe not better, but as good maybe, hopefully. Then we got something that is not actually a pickup. I went to TCA Gaming's house the day before the Collecticon. He is the most generous man you will ever meet. Uh, if you guys have not checked him out, go check him out. He does mostly Pokemon stuff, obviously based on this. But if you go over there, he will just start handing you stuff. And he's like, nope, you're taking it for free. And you're like, are you sure, man? He's like, yeah. There's more coming up to what he gave me. I'll show you guys in a minute, even more exciting than this. But he gave me and Chels, and Chels is not necessarily a card person. So she was like, you can go ahead and open mine on the channel or whatever. So these are both the boxes that he gave us of Pokemon 151, the new set that we probably have already opened recently. I think one of these was opened in that video, but uh, I don't have the actual stuff when I'm recording this. So it's a little bit of a time craziness going on there, but I'm super excited to open this up because this set is super fun. It's nostalgic for old school fans of Pokemon, the original 151 Pokemon. So if you've ever played Pokemon, Pokemon, you know these Pokemon, which is what's super fun about it. So I'm super pumped about those. Thanks again, TCA Gaming. We're going to be talking about him again in a minute. We also have some packs I picked up, which first of all, here's a couple of cool ones. We have Astral Pack 8, which is a cool pack, and then Astral Pack 5. Not like the craziest packs ever, but they are very cool tournament packs. Pretty exciting. They were not very expensive, like 20 bucks each or something. Not that crazy. But the same booth also had some other Yu-Gi-Oh packs that I was super excited about. One that is pretty rare. When I did the every pack opening, I could not find it. It's not Astral Pack 4 so don't get too excited, but it's very close. It's one of the last packs I searched for, Turbo Pack 6. And not one, but 19 Turbo Pack 6. These could contain the Ultimate Rare Dark Arm Dragon. We have pulled it on the channel before because I bought a whole box, but let me tell you, that box was way more expensive. These were actually at a crazy good deal. And when I saw them, I, I was like, how many do you have? I want all of them. And I bought all of them. So this was a super cool pickup. This is like the rarest turbo pack. You don't see it very often because Dark Arm Dragon was insane. So getting these uh, 19 packs is just really exciting. And we're still not done, guys. We're still not done. There's more. I had a couple flips where I bought something and then just put it in my case and like sold it again later. I think I bought a Blue Eyes Ghost Rare. Yeah, I bought like a... Uh, Starlight Exodia PSA 10. The guy gave me a pretty good deal on it. And then Vintage wanted it. So I gave it to him for like not quite market. So I made a little bit on it. He got it still for a good deal. So that was pretty fun. Then I also picked up a couple more graded cards that didn't flip. I bought them and put them in the case, but didn't get enough interest in them to actually sell them at the show. But I do have these cool 2017 reprints. These I bought at the same time. It was a Time Wizard CGC 10. I'm not gonna lie. I, I started looking at this label. I don't like the new label. I, I think some people have said, oh, it actually has grown on me. So far, I don't like it very much, uh, but maybe it'll grow on me. The old ones I thought were cool with the colors. And then uh, we have an IOC. You guys know how hard it is to grade these, these reprints. So this is actually kind of crazy to get a 10 on these. These are for sale, by the way. Some of this stuff will be for sale. Some of it, I'm gonna be opening some. I'm 
not, I'm just gonna be keeping. So if you see something you're interested in, you can hit me up. I'll let you know if it's for sale or not. And then we have some singles that I picked up. I bought a collection from one guy. It was like a mini collection. It had some good stuff. Some of it I actually sold already, but it had like a F Secret Pharaoh's Rare, Red Eyes Black Dragon, a Ghostwriter Star Reader. So I didn't actually, actually, I wanna look at the condition of some of these. The Red Eyes Black Dragon, looks like it's minty actually, which is, oh. Never mind. I think I paid near mint. That sucks. Okay, well, that's that's a little bit of a, a letdown. That thing's going to be like light play at best. So when I bought these, I couldn't really evaluate condition very well because the lighting in there was not great, which made it a little bit difficult. So the Star Eater, I remember, had this on it. Yeah, pretty big thing going. I had some scratches on the surface. So I did see that when I was evaluating. It was kind of hard to see like light scratches and stuff. This one, I remember looking good. Let's see if I was right. Foil looks really good on this. Wow. This actually is nice. This is a near mint ghost rare, which is very rare to you know find these days, especially with no scratches on the foil. That's great. I don't know if I have the unlimited. I think I have the unlimited of this. Pretty sure Junior sent us that. I'm not sure though. I gotta recall which ones he sent us. Dark Arm Dragon. Uh, I thought it looked better than it did until I saw it a second ago and it had some scuffs on it. And that's when I was like, I'll look at these live. I need to stop looking at these. Yeah, these. this is certainly scuffed up. Lightly played. That's fine. Ironically, he had an x -Tox Hydra. He didn't know who I was, so it wasn't like it was like a joke. Because he asked like afterwards like what my YouTube channel was or something. So he didn't know. He hadn't seen the x -Tox Hydra shorts or anything like that. So uh, he wasn't just memeing on me. Then we got a Water Enchantress. I actually picked up three of these, I think, and then two of the rights. But then I think VOP picked up three of the cards. And then I think it was Uber that picked up the other one. So I, I immediately moved them as soon as I picked them up. They're like, wait, I want those. Uh, so I have one left of that. And then I got a engage and engage, I guess is the correct way to say it. These are very new. So I'd hope they're in good condition. They seem to be for the most part. We got a Teresia. This is an actual real starlight. I will say when you look at these side by side, it is so much easier to read the starlight rare's name than these. These are impossible to read. Look at this. Try and read that. If you don't know what card it is, there's no way you're reading that. So another reason Starlights are better, I will say. Uh, you can actually read the card name. This, it just blends in. If you kind of go like that, you can kind of get it. But like Starlights, it doesn't matter what angle it is, you can read the read the name. So I do like that better. I don't like not being able to read the card. You're like, what is this? I can't see. So the, the Theresia is very nice. The Theresia, how do you even say that? I don't know. Battles of Chaos, Starlight, it's definitely not very expensive, but it is pretty cool. Oh my gosh, what is that? Oh my gosh, we got stuff on the edge. This is gonna be this is gonna be rough for me, I think. This pickup might have been one of our worst ones. We have a shooting majestic star dragon. I do have a PSA 10 of this for sale as well. So all of these I will have for sale, the ones I just showed you, the singles. And then I was gonna do this collection, but I think this video is gonna end up being too long. So we might do the collection in a separate video. I have one last story before we end this video. Speaking of TCA gaming, we were at his house and there was a bunch of other people there. He had a bunch of evolving skies packs that he was handing out to people. And apparently there was some sort of error with them where they were just crazy pull rates. And so Chelsea and I both got, I think like nine packs or something. And he was just giving them out for free because he's the most ridiculously generous man of all time. You got to guys got to go follow him. So we opened like not, like 18 packs or whatever. Here's what we pulled. We had a Zinnia's Resolve. We pulled a Copycat. We pulled a Rayhan. A Leafeon VMAX. I think this is like a $70 card. And then I pulled finally the Moonbria. Yeah, this is a $500 Pokemon card. So I have not had a chance to really evaluate it yet, but I know if it can get like a BGS, like 10 or a black label, they're pretty crazy. Even though there's like thousands of these graded. It's insane. It's one of the most hyped Pokemon cards of all time. It's only a couple years old, but it is a really beautiful looking card. And Rusty essentially gave it to us by letting me open the packs. There seems to be a little bit of a line right there. I don't know if you guys can see it. Yeah, down the right side right there. So yeah, this is not BGS quality i don't think unfortunately but it is overall pretty good condition maybe it could squeak by with a psa 10 who knows but that was a super cool card to pull i didn't think i was gonna pull anything so i didn't record it unfortunately i pulled it and i was like wait what is going on i didn't think i was supposed to be able to get this it's a very rare pull so those packs were like insane they were just like absolutely loaded so unfortunately that will not be in the vlog or else it would have been a great way to just start it off kick it off pulling a 500 dollars pokemon card so i almost forgot to tell you guys about a really cool story and another thing that I did at Collecticon. So if you guys don't know, Collecticon brings in a lot of different voice actors, whether it be from big anime or Yu-Gi-Oh! and different Yu-Gi-Oh! series. And uh, there were several Yu-Gi-Oh! people there at this event. And I forgot to actually bring anything specifically for them to get signed. But I did have one card that I eventually decided to get signed. 
a first edition Black Rose Dragon. So I'm really interested to see, was this a really stupid thing to do or was this cool? Because we got this signed by Akiza's voice actor. Her name is like Erica Schroeder, I think her name is exactly. I, I don't know, I probably messed up the last name, but she has really cool signatures. As you can see, she did the red, she did Akiza, she did some hearts, and then she has her actual signature in black. I was like, you know what? Let's get this first edition Black Rose signed, which by the way, it's moderately played slash lightly played. It's not near mint or anything, don't freak out. But I thought this would be cool, and I was a little bit on the fence with if it was smart or not. And I was like, ah, I don't know if this is gonna be really like a good idea or not. So I wanna hear your guys' opinion in the comments, but I did decide after getting the signature, Chelsea actually went and got it for me because the lines were really short before uh, everyone besides the VIPs was in there and I was running the booth. So she went and got it for me. And once I got it back, I am definitely happy that I did it. I really like the look of this card and I'm gonna be throwing it in my Edison deck. So my Edison deck now has a signed first edition Black Rose Ghost Rare, but this was like a 600, 700, $800 card that I got signed. And some people now will hate it because it has like writing on it. But I think other people like me will appreciate I think it's really cool and I'm gonna keep it in my deck I don't think I'm gonna be selling this this is something that I want to keep because I, it's just a good memory and it looks really awesome so I'm super pumped about it but I want to see your guys opinion how many of you guys think that I completely ruined that card and how many of you guys think that it was a smart decision or if you're just on the fence I want to know this has been a big variety Pokemon magic Yu-Gi-Oh hopefully you guys have enjoyed this sort of a different style you know a little bit slower pace and more like the old school Ruxin so if you did enjoy it make sure to let me know I might do it again in the future we're gonna go through that childhood collection that I picked up Eclecticon very soon that was the only other thing i didn't show you guys but it's pretty big so i'm gonna save it for a separate video shout out to tonefo show daxter tomato juice puffins of doom ernesto deanna america doyster supreme sage 21 cj and then a tie show ian moose jr barding robert f and thomas mclean thank you guys for supporting the channel i'll see you guys in the next video peace